<laughs> yes. Okay, so we have water in a bucket. That bucket is upside down at times. Why, this is important to understand, why does the water stay in the bucket? Because I think you would agree with me that water in a bucket upside down, the water would normally fall out. Agree? So, first, we're going to do several things with this. First one is we need to understand why the water stays in the bucket. Uh, I love it when we just get this, the, uh, this is what we're talking about, so here is your answer. So, Jupiter Forest, Mr. Muller. No, there's much more to it than that. Nicola. Water in the bucket wants to keep going. What is it about the water that keeps it wanting to move in a certain straight line? Inertia. The inertia. Remember, inertia of the water is the tendency of an object to move in a straight line, to avoid an acceleration. So the water keeps trying to move in a straight line. Keep going. But the, the stream keeps the bucket We'll go, we'll, yeah, the stream keeps the bucket, but we'll just talk about the bucket. The bucket? The bucket keeps the water from keep continuing in the same direction. Notice, the water has inertia. It tries to keep moving in a straight line. For example, when it's at the very top, that water tries to go this way, but the bucket keeps getting in the way. So that bucket keeps pushing that water inward, and the water then moves in a circle. And it's the bucket that causes a centripetal force acting on the water to keep it moving in that circle. So it's the inertia of the water that prevents it from falling out of the, the bucket here. Now, we're actually going to analyze this situation. We're going to figure out the tension uh, in the string when the bucket is at the very bottom. In order to do so, we need some pieces of information. The first one is, and if you could write this down, because I can't write stuff down at the moment, you need the uh, radius of the water. The radius of the water is going to be looks like uh, actually 75 centimeters or 0.75 meters, and the mass of the water and bucket of everything is uh, 0.5528 kilograms. 0.5528 kilograms. The one other piece of information we need is the angular velocity of the water and bucket. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the clock, and I'm going to try to spin it so that we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there we go, 7. So I'm going to try to spin it such that we're moving at 1 revolution per second, which I'm pretty close here, or 2 pi radians per second. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the um, tension in the string when the bucket is at the bottom. So notice, oh actually we need all the pieces of information. Mass was 0 0.5528 kilograms. <coughs> yes? Yeah. The radius is 0 0.75 meters. The angular velocity was 2 pi radians per second. We're trying to figure out the tension at the bottom. So notice the bucket actually is in different locations as it moves around the circle. And the free body diagram is actually going to change depending on the location. So we're trying to figure out the tension at the very bottom. Please give me the free body diagram for the bucket at the bottom here. Mark. We're not going to worry about the fact that there are two strings. We're just going to pretend there's just one. Tension going this way. Is there a force normal? No, there's no force normal. I can't think of any other forces. So this is our complete free body diagram. So next, we are going to sum the forces. Wheatley, in what direction are we going to sum the forces in? In direction. Good for you. We're going to sum the forces. Remember, anytime we're moving in a circle, the, we're summing the forces in the in direction. Please sum the forces in the in direction uh, for me. Lil? Um, the force of tension times the force of gravity. Mass equal to? Mass times the acceleration in the in direction, which is called the centripetal acceleration. Now. For the bucket, when it's at the very bottom of its arc, 
what is the centripetal force keeping the bucket moving in a circle? Cosine. Is it tension? It's not just tension. <coughs> No, the inertia is not, not a force. This is the, the that's what's trying to that's what keeps the water um, in the bucket. Josh. It is in this particular case the combination of two forces, the tension minus the force of gravity. Because the centripetal force is the net force in the indirection. So literally, in this case, it is tension minus force of gravity, which is the centripetal force. Okay, on the left hand side we have tension. The equation for force of gravity, Brian, is? The acceleration of gravity, what equation are we going to use for centripetal acceleration? Frank? Um, mass times uh, zero. Well, R times um, what is that? omega squared. Again, we're going to use R times omega squared. I do understand that we've used R times omega squared many times in the class today, but don't you worry, you'll get to use tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Uh, class, what did everyone bring to the party? No. Not that. Yes. Don't get overzealous. A lot of you on quizzes or final exams get really excited. You want to just cross off mass. Tension did not bring mass to the party. So tension is equal to mg plus mr omega squared. Mass is 0 0.5528 times g, which is 9.8, plus the mass 0 0.5528 times the radius 0 0.75 times 2 pi squared. Tension equals. is plenty. And so with sig figs, it works out to be 22 newtons, because I didn't take that radius to, or, oh, to, get to two sig figs. So, and yes, it is a tension, and it works out to be 22 newtons. What, Mitch, happens to the tension the faster I spin the bucket? It'll increase. Notice, because it's on the, this side over here in a positive, that the faster I spin the bucket, the larger the tension. The reverse is also true. When I slow the bucket down, that tension is going to decrease. We are now going to figure out the minimum angular velocity at which I need to spin the bucket such that water will not come out of the bucket. Which means I need to spin it and find that break-even point where water does come out of the bucket. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to spin the bucket and slow it down until we find that point where water just starts to come out of the bucket. So please pay attention, because I'm only going to do this once, because water is going to go over there, hopefully right there, and not over there. We'll find out. And please pay attention. You want to pay attention to, number one, where the water starts to come out of the bucket, where the bucket is when that occurs, and two, what happens to the string when the water starts to come out of the bucket. So here we go. I'm spinning the bucket, and I slow it down to the point where, ooh, the, oh, you can feel it right about, ooh, there it is. Oh, there it is, right? Right about there, you could, right, is that it? I, oh, yep, that's definitely it. You say right <laughs> there, is that's the speed we're trying to find, right there. So what we're figuring out here is the minimum angular speed to keep water in the bucket. Number one, Laura, where is the bucket when water starts to come out of the bucket? It's at 
the very top. Now, it might look to you as if it was just past that very top point, but that's because it does take a little bit of time for that water to come out, and so the whole thing has gone a little bit to your left. But realize the water is at, or the bucket is at the very top when water just starts to come out. So we have our bucket, we have our water, someone's coming out, and it looks like this. That's the first thing. So we're going to draw our free body diagram when the bucket is at the very top. Please, Daniela, give me the free body diagram for the bucket when it's at the very top. Um, force of gravity down. Okay. And that's it. Notice how the free body diagram is dependent on location. If, the, if we were drawing the bucket over here, the force of gravity would be down, the tension would be inward. So you have to get very careful to identify where the object is in the circle when you are drawing your free body diagram. We are now going to do what, Kraus? Sum the forces in the in direction. Good. Go ahead. Sum the forces in the in direction for me, please, Knickerbocker. Tension plus force of gravity. Tension plus force of gravity. Force of gravity is clearly down. Very Also in though. Ah, remember, we're not summing the forces in the y direction, we're summing the forces in the in direction. In is positive. So notice both of these are positive. Keep going, Nick Barker. Two mass times uh, centrifugal acceleration. Good, keep going. Good. And then uh, we're going to replace the uh, acceleration with uh, r omega squared. <coughs> Good. So on the left hand side, we have tension plus the mass uh, times the acceleration due to gravity. On the right, mass times r times the angular velocity squared. Here's where we need to identify what happened to the string at this break even point where it just water just started to flow out of the bucket. You can describe what happened to the string, please. Hey, you guys like to drive the bus. We need other people. You, you drive the bus enough, too. Uh, sure, David. Um, it started like sagging or something. It went slack, right? So the, the string actually went slack at this moment. If the string is slack, what, Connor, is the tension in the string? Uh, It is definitely going to be less than 22 degrees. I need more specifics on that. Can you tell me what the tension is when it's gone slack? Andy? Zero. Zero. Notice when the string has gone slack, it's no longer uh, taut, then the tension in the string is zero. So at this point where we figured out the minimum angular velocity, that at that point, the tension goes to zero. So the tension is zero. We then have uh, mass times the acceleration due to gravity equals mr omega squared. Everyone brought mass to the party. Everybody did it now. We end up with the angular velocity equals the square root of g over r, or the square root of 9.8 divided by 0 0.75. The angular velocity is equal to. Three point six one four seven. Good. So with six figs, three point six radians per second. 